So panic mode has settled in with many YouTubers and the internet talking about the latest in the XZ utilities backdoor that could have been far worse and affected many critical systems. As we see here, we have Linux got wrecked by a backdoor attack by Fireship. We have the Primogen talking about it. Theo from T3, what everyone missed about the Linux hack. Mental Outlaw on the XZ backdoor almost compromised every Linux system. And even Mudahar reaching out from some ordinary gamers. Talking about the subject, today I want to go through the timeline of what actually happened here and how things progressed to the state that we're in today. This is basically an aftermath review and what kind of damage could have happened versus what realistically happened. But let's hear from Mudahar real quick. This weekend was a total nightmare. Hello guys and gals. One of the biggest security flaws might have dropped in 2024. <laughs> now I saw Linux trending yesterday, so I was like, oh, good news. Mm -mm. <laughs> Didn't seem like it was good news for the last three days. And it sure wasn't good news. As even the government caught wind of this one, America's Cybersecurity Defense Agency in the United States reported that supply chain compromise affecting XZ Utilities data compression library and gave the issued CVE. Basically, the recommendation here to developers and users is to downgrade the XZ Utilities to an uncompromised version. So if, if you're running and you haven't heard yet, XZ Utilities 5.6.0 or 0.1, there is malicious activity that's been reported and it is an urgent security alert for Fedora 41 and Rawhide users. You can see that here as well in a blog post created by Red Hat Enterprise Linux and Red Hat. They have found that two particular versions of the XZ libraries on their systems, which were these two right here. These are RPM packages. So at this time, Fedora 40 Linux users were not affected by this malware exploit, but Fedora 40 Linux beta users need to make sure that they revert. Anyways, Let's see how bad this hack was and how bad it could have been. According to people on Hacker News, there's been a lot of talk about things on the Y Combinator Hacker News forum and is an interesting read. We'll go through that and then discuss how the X Utilities backdoor could have been a far worse incident, but luckily it seems to be only isolated to bleeding edge distributions that were testing the latest packages. But before we get to that, let's talk about how bad is the XZ hack. I've been avidly reading all about it lately. I understand how it came about and my sympathies firmly with the maintainer. Basically, this user wants people to explain in simple terms how bad it is or how bad it could have been. And people are saying here, it could have been much worse, but it was identified last minute Debian, Ubuntu, and Fedora had code only in their testing channels and, over and overall only .deb or .rpm based distro packages with system D have been affected. And then another user brings up a good Point think beat. The real question should be how many more similar things are in the entire Linux code base? I would put a good bet of money that there are more that haven't been detected. And that's another great point as we don't really know to what extent this XZ utility exploit could have gone on for if it wasn't detected by Andres Frund. Let's think about some of the worst case scenarios here. One, we could have had a wide spread event and distribution of the XZ utilities, it could have made itself into mainstream distributions and compromised systems at a much higher level, including enterprise servers, cloud infrastructure, and of course, even personal computers running Linux. Think Ubuntu, Red Hat, Debian, and of course, much, much more. We're lucky that it didn't get widespread because a lot of Linux distributions focus on stability first. That way, we have to test and retest packaging and make sure security's ironclad before releasing it to the mainstream. This type of stability model makes it so that newer packages don't get just thrown into the mainstream, but doesn't mean it can't still get in. Another thing was the delay of detection. If we wouldn't have been able to actually detect this exploit, it could have gone on for a much longer period. We're talking months or even years. The attackers could have utilized the back door and gained unauthorized access to sensitive data and launched even further attacks. That didn't happen because, of course, the detection was fairly quick. We'll actually talk about some of that timeline after a few ways this hack could have been more severe. This could have had an impact also on critical infrastructures. Why is that? Well, Linux runs a majority of the world's servers and very important ones at that. Think about things like the cloud, enterprise, 
and even defense systems. There's a lot of critical infrastructure where Linux is used. We can imagine in services, power grids, transportation, networks, financial systems. This could have been a widespread safety risk. But luckily, the overall recent exploit in XZ was contained to bleeding edge distributions, not spreading itself across much of the Linux world, instead being a very isolated incident. But that's not to underscore the importance of a robust cybersecurity practice and being vigilant to make sure that we don't get new threats. This event has been moving so fast in the news that it already has its own Wikipedia page. That's right, XZ Utilities Backdoor. It's an article on the current event, and since it's changing rapidly, this initial news may be unreliable, as it says above, but it says here on the 29th of March, 2024, software developer Andres Frund that he found a maliciously introduced backdoor in the Linux utility XZ within lib LZMA library in version 5.60 and 5.6.1 in February of 2024. XZ commonly deployed as a part of most Linux distributions, although the backdoor version wasn't yet widely deployed at the time of discovery. The backdoor gives attackers who possess a private key remote code execution on the affected Linux systems. It has been assigned a CVSS score of 10 out of 10, which is the highest possible score. That's why this is quite a massive security vulnerability. And even the U.S. federal agency responsible for cybersecurity infrastructure, which we saw at the beginning here, called the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency had issued a security advisory recommending that affected devices should roll back to previous uncompromised version. Vendors like Red Hat, SUSE, Debian have mirrored the CISA advisory and reverted the updates to the effective packages in older distributions. So there's a lot going on here, of course, but there's actually some drama in the background because there are suspicions and speculations of who actually performed this attack. Let's get to the timeline of the XZ open source attack. This is a great timeline as reported by Russ Cox. I'll post a link in the description below, but I really want to focus on this right here. As it says, over a period of two years, an attacker named Jia Tan worked as a diligent, effective contributor to the XZ compression library, eventually being granted commit access and maintainership. Using that access, they installed a very subtle, carefully hidden backdoor into the lib LZMA, a part of XZ that also happens to be a dependency of OpenSSH SSHD on Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, and other systemd-based Linux distributions. That backdoor watches for the attacker hidden commands at the start of the SSH session, giving the attacker the ability to run arbitrary command on the target system without logging in, giving unauthenticated target remote code execution, which we should all understand is very bad. Why was Giatan named? Well, there's more information on Hacker News. Of course, this is still developing and there's a lot of speculation going on, but some people are starting to piece things together as to who may be responsible for this. And seemingly right now, it seems to be pointing to Gia. We'll see how things go, but some more context from Hacker News. Very annoying. The apparent author of the backdoor was in communication with me over several weeks trying to get XZ, the affected version, added to Fedora 40 and 41 because of its great new features. We even worked with them to fix the Valgrind issue which it turns out was caused by the backdoor he had added. Isn't that interesting? Almost a Trojan horse if you want to think about it like that. We had a race last night to fix the problem after an inadvertent break in the, of the embargo. He has been a part of the XZ project for two years. Is it possible that this has been two years in the making that from the beginning of the get-go, Gia had been planning this all along and wanted to add in this suspicious code so they could gain access to multiple systems? We can only speculate, but adding all sorts of the binary test files, and to be honest, the with this level of sophistication, I would be suspicious of even older versions of XZ until proven otherwise. So here comes the aftermath of things. After this XZ exploit had been found, GitHub suspended Gia's account. Also, Lasse Collins' account had also been suspended. GitHub disabled all Tukani repositories, including downloads from release page, this is given to us from Janan, and this user is keeping us up to date with various different Linux distributions that Gia seemed to be an approved publisher at, including things like OpenSUSE, is still listing Gia's public key. Arch appears to still have Gia, and there's clearly more follow-up that will be made in the coming days in what's happening here. Overall, the aftermath has been fairly tame 
even though we are getting many, many different videos on how wild this hack was, which it is absolutely wild. And as Mudahar said, a total nightmare for Linux in the Linux community, as there are many big distributions, including Fedora and Arch Linux that were affected, but seemingly no stable or critical Linux distributions that run our servers and infrastructures, which goes back to how bad is the XZ hack? Well, thanks to the open source community in Linux, it's often amazing at how quickly people can identify and address these security vulnerabilities. Let's not think for a second that other operating systems don't have their own exploits, but some of the great factors that contribute to the effectiveness of the Linux open source community, finding these security vulnerabilities and tending to them very quickly are things like transparency, a large developer base, collaboration and communication in the FOSS community, a rapid response, and community oversight. Overall, Linux benefits from this type of transparency and collaborative effort because we were able to catch this before it escalated into a larger scale incident. Anyways, that's the current aftermath of the recent XZ utilities exploit on Linux, which created this massive backdoor. Let me know if you were affected in the comment section below. Love to hear from you. I also posted a poll up in which almost 200 people have already responded, but were you affected by the XZ exploit? 8% of you said yes, and 92% of you said no, which is great to hear. Looks like we do have quite a bit of the community running on the bleeding edge source of Linux. Either way, I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux, and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.